Hey, welcome back. In today's short video, we're going to take a look at a rigid panel again, this time from Bouge RV. It's the 100 watt rigid panel. And we're going to compare and contrast it to a 100 watt portable slash folding panel. Just for some quick perspective here, these are all 100 watt panels. This is a two panel design from To Go Power. And you can see, obviously, it folds up to about half the size of the Bouge RV rigid panel, which obviously does not fold up. And then you've got a four panel design here from a Rock Pals, and again, also 100 watt. Let's open these other two up so you can kind of get an unfolded size comparison and uh, see how they all kind of look in relation to each other. All right, now you can see them unfolded. And I have them basically at the same alignment and elevation angle. Kind of see it's about as close as i can get it to be fair so these rigid panels typically come with mc4 connectors on them which is these guys right here and these are waterproof connectors but this uh to go powers uh, advanced 650 that i i did a review on just recently uh, it comes with an adapter here an mc4 to an eight millimeter that's what it uses on the input you can see down here i'm getting get the backlight on i'm getting 85 84, 85 watts input on that. So we can uh, kind of compare that to what you get on the 100 watt from Rock Pals. It'll take a second to climb back up. So we're only getting 70 watts out of the Rock Pals versus call it 84, 85 out of the Bouge RV 100. Let's see how we're getting out of the to go uh, power 100 watt. It's got an Anderson connector with, and it comes with adapters, obviously, to go wherever you need it to go. Let's see what that one gives us. Yeah, so for that one, we're getting about the same 85, 84 watts out of the to-go power. So the Rock Pals, and this is kind of what I expected. I reviewed the Rock Pals about a year ago, and again, I, I bought that one with my own money. Uh, to-go power has provided this one to me, and Bouge RV provided this panel to me as well. Uh, just to disclose that, but you can see the difference here. The Rock Pals is the least efficient of the bunch. Now some cool things on here while we're looking at this is that they, they've pre-drilled this aluminum frame for you. So if you want to permanently mount this on top of something, whether it's a, you know, a roof structure or the top of an RV or something like that uh, shed, all you really need to do is get the accessory clips, which they also sell. So Bouge RV sells a bunch of different accessories for these things, and uh, you can go to their either their Amazon store or their website and uh, you know pick whatever accessories you need whether it's adapter cables uh, mounting hardware all that stuff but it's all very standard let's go find out what the weight differential is I can tell you right now that the weight of this because it has a glass front uh, up here this, this glass front is going to be fairly heavy so this is going to be the heaviest of the bunch which is again you're paying for portability that's why you have premium priced compared to uh, something relatively inexpensive like this um, but let's find out what the difference really is in terms of weight. All right, I've got the, this is the To-Go Powers portable panel. So eight pounds, call it 13 ounces. All right, here's the Bouge RV panel. Quite a bit heavier, 13 pounds, six ounces. All right, so first and foremost, one of the biggest reasons you might want to consider a rigid panel is cost. The cost per watt of a rigid panel is usually about somewhere in the neighborhood of a dollar a watt, plus or minus a few cents. Um, whereas the portables can run anywhere from two to three dollars per watt. So they're two to three times more expensive typically for the same kind of rated output. Uh, so that alone might be a reason why you might want to consider a rigid panel. Um, the other reasons are if you're in a windy area where you, know, you need stability, the portable panels are going to be more susceptible to being blown around by gusty winds. Whereas the rigid ones are much heavier, uh, but those are going to be much better suited for windy environments. So, and then obviously, if you need to leave the panel outside for an extended period of time, like months, weeks, or even years, you definitely want to be looking at a rigid panel, not a portable panel. The portable panels really just are not designed for that type of deployment, whereas the rigid panels definitely are. They are pretty durable. They can handle hail uh, for the most part up to a certain size. Um, so they're, they are designed to handle reasonable impacts. Uh, but they're they're just not going to probably withstand um, being loaded and unloaded with other equipment banging around um, like a portable panel which is able to fold up and protect the cells on the inside of the fold 
So that's something to keep in mind. Let's talk real quick about these this half cut cell design. So what the half cut cell design is supposed to do is give you just a little bit more efficiency because it uh, reduces the, the resistance on the bus bars because the bus bars are actually smaller for each half cell than they are for a full cell. Uh, and then they're also supposed to give you some benefit in terms of if you have some limited shading on the, on the panels because of the way these things are wired uh, as opposed to something that's not, uh, that is not a half, half cut cell design. Um, it's supposed to have a little bit less impact um, on the loss of output with a little bit of a shading across some of the cells. So we're gonna use a precision testing instrument that I acquired just for this, this particular test. It's, uh, it's called a post-it note. <laughs> and we're gonna try just basically putting a little bit of post-it note shade on one of these half cells and just see what the difference is uh, from normal output to when I have one of these cells partially blocked with a post-it note. We're gonna start with this standard 100 watt um, panel first and just kind of put this on, on one of these cells and, and see what it does. All right, so first of all, this is the, uh, this happens to be a to-go power 100 watt panel. We are getting a good respectable 87 watts on this thing right now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So let's see what we get. Let's see what that drops to from 87 watts pretty consistently. So let's put this on one of the cells and, uh, and see what happens. So let's say uh, I just put it right up here. And let's see what impact that has. All right, so we've dropped to 62, 68 watts. Let's call it 65 as a median there versus the 87 watts we were getting. All right, let's, I mean, that's not too bad. You would be surprised at how just a little tiny obstruction can make a significant impact. All right, let's take that one out. And this is the uh, input from the Bouge RV100 with the half cut cell design. All right, we're getting 79 watts. Yep, pretty consistent 79 watts. So let's, let's partially cover one of these half cut cells. Let's just kind of maybe do uh, the top middle one like we kind of did with the other one and just see what we got. So we have dropped to 64 watts. Let's call it 60 watts median, I would guess. All right, so I'm not sure how scientific a test that was on the half cut cells, but it's the best I could come up with on short notice. Now, next thing I wanted to kind of talk about was something that I haven't really demonstrated before, but if you had two solar panels, whether they be rigid or portable, and they have roughly the same specs in terms of voltage in particular, these are both basically 18 volt panels, um, same amperage uh, ratings, and uh, they're both 100 watt. So uh, that makes them candidates to be connected in parallel. So if you have a portable power station in that 1000 watt range or higher, uh, then it's a pretty good candidate for taking a couple of 100 watt panels if maybe you've already got one and wanted to add a second one, you can connect them in parallel. And since this has MC4 connectors, I found my other panel that also has MC4 connectors. That's the all powers. Uh, but Bujari also sells these MC4 parallel connector kit. So it's just a couple of Y cables and it's, it's really is idiot proof. So I'm gonna go show you how that works right now. And uh, you can see what the benefit is by hooking these up in parallel. So in the previous clip, you saw that this was outputting something in the high 70s, 79, 80, somewhere in that vicinity. So we're just going to connect to the connectors here. You're gonna see we take the positive side uh, from the Bouge RV, and then we'll take the positive side from the other portable panel, and that gives us our one Y connector. And then we'll take the other Y connector and we'll do the same with the negative side. All right, now we have on the other end, one positive and one negative. Now I need a cable that goes from positive and negative to either an Anderson or to the uh, eight millimeter that's on the Jackery. So let me go grab that cable. So I've got an MC4 to eight millimeter adapter here. Probably the Anderson would be a better choice than the eight millimeter because the Anderson can handle higher amperage. But in this case, I don't think we're, you know, this, this does have an, an amperage cap um, on the input of around seven and a half amps. So I think we're probably gonna hit that even at 80 watts so we may not get an exact doubling 
of the 80 watts that we were getting off just the Bouge RV. But let's, uh, again, you really can't screw this up. Make those connections and then we'll plug it in to the input and see what we get. So we are running into that seven and a half amp cap on this input. So really the only way that we're gonna do better than that is to use a power station that's got a higher input um, capacity than what this Jackery 1000 has. This is another complaint I have about this particular unit. You would think that a 1000 watt power supply could handle more input than 113 watts. Right, so now I've got a double capacity versus the Jackery. This is the Ace Volt Camp Power 2000 watt, and it can handle a lot more input. And I've had to switch actually to an Anderson adapter from the MC4s. And I'll plug that into the side here. And as you might recall, we were getting about 112 watts on the Jackery. We were maxing out the input uh, with the two panels in parallel. So we'll see what we get here. I really apologize. I, I don't know how to make this screen any more readable in this kind of bright light. Yeah, we are at 144, 145 watts. So just to wrap up talking about the Bouger RV100, it's a very solid panel. I do like the half cut design and um, I like the fact that it's pre-drilled. It does give you a lot of mounting options. And um, I, I will circle back and just say one more time in case you missed it on the previous video, that it is really important to understand what the input constraints are on your particular power, power station because that will determine where you cap out when you start adding uh, panels in parallel. And I hope you did find that helpful just to show you quickly how you go about doing that, especially if you got something like um, like the Bouge RV with MC4 connectors. Um, so if you found that helpful or anything else in the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Would uh, mean a lot. And um, thanks for sticking with me. I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.